Hello there everybody and welcome to this channel. My name is Savvy from SEAnatomy.com and for today's video we're going to be working on a T-Rex. So get your reference images ready, let's hop into Blender, get your drawing pad and let's get started. So starting off we're just going to create a model for this uh, animal uh, just like any other video. This time uh, on the other hand we're going to try and get good topology. This is so that if we want to animate the T-Rex at a later stage we can actually animate the low res one instead uh, this is also so that if we actually want to use the remesh modifier in any software either blender or zbrush it just helps to have good topology right off the bat so at a later stage if you want to animate this you can just use the shrink wrap modifier in blender and then you can still have some of the high risk details um, on your model and then you can animate it at a later stage the topology of this model doesn't necessarily have to be perfect it just has to be good enough for us to start working on it and also if you want to animate like i said before you can rig it much easier if the topology actually works with you if not you're gonna struggle a lot and then you're probably gonna have to do your own retopology um all over again or you could use like automated or um you can use blender or zebras to give you like a more retopologize a better retopologize model but it's best to just do everything manually and right off the bat so we're going to retopologize this and then we're going to add in details with the multi-resolution and start sculpting on it so even though the topology doesn't have to be perfect we still want to make sure that it actually makes sense so that when we start sculpting it's a lot easier and when it comes to um, some parts of the topology, you can totally skip it, such as the legs. You just want to get um, enough grooves around there so that we can able to sculpt over it. Um, in terms of animations, there's certain topology you're supposed to follow. You're supposed to make edge flows going in a circular motion around the leg to make sure that uh, it's able to be rigged properly and weight painted. But here, uh, we can still animate it at the end it's just not going to be perfect uh, we can also fix the topology at a later stage and then use the shrink wrap over the high resolution using the low resolution model that we're working on here so like i said before even though the topology doesn't have to be perfect we just want it to be good enough so that we can work on it properly now coming into the sculpting it's really easy once your topology is already done and everything and uh, everything looks fine. It could look fat and clunky and all that. We're going to fix that in the sculpting phase. So what we're going to start with is blocking out all the muscle groups first. And good thing is if you just block out everything out properly, you can already skip so many steps. And at some point, you could already just be finished. You just have to refine things. So we're going to block out all the uh, muscle groups first such as the pectorals the trapezius dorsi and uh, we're going to come into the legs and then focus on the head afterwards so when looking at the t-rex you'll notice some subtle differences obviously differences in shape and size of some muscle groups compared to other animals that we've worked on previously so for the legs for example uh, the quadriceps and the biceps femoris is much larger obviously uh, so for this sculpt we're going to start off by just blocking out the iliotibialis and then we're going to go into details for the iliofibularis afterwards and then you'll also notice a lot of differences in the head and what you might find a little difficult or a little challenging to sculpt in is the arm because it's really small and I believe I've said this in a previous video where um, some small uh, topology or some small meshes are really easy to work on some others are really difficult depending on your topology so if you want to make it easier for yourself you can also topology you can also model out the topology for yourself like the um, shapes of, of those muscle groups such as the biceps for example the deltoids anything that can help you sculpt better really um, anything that works for you Another way is to uh, just up your resolution. Uh, that, that can help you get those really small details. Um, but usually I like working in a low resolution and then going upwards. 
So as you can see now, the blocking phase or the blocking out phase is really easy uh, because the topology just really allows us to uh, do as much as we possibly can. We, we have a lot of freedom around here. Uh, so as you can see now, we are sculpting the iliotibialis that I mentioned before and then sculpting in the iliofibularis. Uh, these are the details of the leg. So um, we, we just have to remember that the biceps femoris and the quadriceps are really large. The entire leg is really large. So the major shapes of this sculpt are the body and the legs. Um, if your silhouette really reads and it looks all right, it looks okay with the references, it doesn't have to be perfect, uh, then you've done a good job. If uh, it doesn't, then what you can do is just come into multi-resolution and just drop down in resolution and just change the shapes so like like you would in zbrush we're going to do it in the uh with using the multi-resolution modifier so you can either drop down in um detail or you could just turn it off completely and then work on the low res and then come back into sculpting later on there really was no challenging thing about the sculpt or anything major or really challenging and really difficult about the sculpt except for the arms just because they were really small but um, like I said before you can just go up in resolution and you can edit them out in a high resolution in the multi resolution modifier. Um, but as you're working you'll find that there are some things that are really tedious to work on such as the tail. There are these repetitive patterns that you have to follow. You have to make sure that you do it right or at least close enough to accurate. You can't just go in and just uh, draw in straight lines going up, down, going from up and going all the way down to the tail. Uh, so those are the parts that you'll find really uh, tedious because you just have to do it again and again and again. There are ways for you to make your own brush alpha so you can make a br uh, brush with the pattern for the tail and then you can just uh, scale it up and draw in the, the detail yourself. Um, but I like to just do things manually. Sometimes the brushes, it's a whole extra work for you to create them. Uh, and sometimes they might not work with you. And sometimes you could just get lazy and you don't really want to work on brushes. You just want to sculpt and that's about it. So those are the only challenging or tedious things that you'll find. Uh, the rest were really simple. Some you might find really enjoyable. I really enjoyed working on the head and the um, abdominal obliques. I found those really interesting because I was experimenting with some brushes, um, with the clay and the standard. Uh, so you'll find some parts interesting. Now, when it comes to the head, I recommend using a clay brush. It's much easier to get those details, those like really rough, scaly details out with the clay brush. Uh, the standard brush can do some some good here and there, but that's just to puff up some shapes. Uh, that's what I use it for. So you can come in with a clay brush and then you can just try and crumble things out. Um, so there are these really large rock looking shapes uh, over the uh, the head, like the brows or the forehead or the uh, around the nostrils. And uh, if you want to get scales, I recommend getting a brush with specific scale alphas rather than doing each scale by yourself. Uh, you can do each scale by yourself. It's more controlled that way, but it's going to take forever to, to finish the entire head. So instead, you, you just want to get um, something procedural such as a clay brush. Um, uh, you can have an alpha on it with some scales and you can just go over the entire project or the entire head really quickly. Now coming into the neck for muscles such as the sternocleidomastoid or the levator scapulae, uh, what you can do instead is use the standard brush to get the shape around and then you can use your crease to get the dips in or the divots. Um, what instead I used was the clay brush and this was because I wanted the uh, muscle groups to feel tight almost. Um, but you can just use your standard brush to puff them out um, and then later on use your crease and then mix it around with your clay or different kinds of brushes. Um, so what I just generally use for these kind of muscle groups, if I really want to make them tight, I use my uh, clay brush and my crease brush and just to get those 
um, really, really fine lines in between. Or sometimes I come in with a pinch, which is really good. So you get your crease brush, you draw the line, you draw like your little um, crease, and then you go in with your pinch brush, just a little bit, not too much. Uh, so you, you bring down the strength, the brush strength to almost um, 0.4 or 0.3. And then you just use your pinch brush to make it look really tight. For the arms over here, fortunate enough, my topology is good enough. It uh, it doesn't really fight back with me. So uh, I was able to sculpt around the biceps and the deltoids very easily. And then the triceps were a little bit of a challenge only because the arm was so bent close to the, um, to the body. Um, but you can just rotate it outwards, sculpt it, and then rotate it backwards if you really want to do that, if you really want to get all kinds of details. Um, that's also in case you will be showcasing those parts of the uh, sculpt as well. But usually if you're not going to showcase anything, then it doesn't really matter whether you put that much details there if you're not going to render it. Um, sort of like any any project that you'll be working on if it's not going to be rendered then there's no point in you putting that much details there um, but if it is going to be rendered if it's going to be your main focus if it's if uh, people are going to have the ability to zoom in and look uh, at these certain details then you might want to put in a little more work here and there uh, then now when it came to the legs as well, um, putting in the scales and all those kind of details. Uh, like I said before, I use my clay brush and uh, I, I let it puff up certain areas. Um, usually I use my clay brush because it, it is so good at reconstructing certain meshes. It doesn't really work like the standard brush where uh, if you have details already on the mesh, your standard brush will just puff up the area around it, sort of like your inflate as well. But your clay buildup just, uh, your clay brush or your clay buildup, it just destroys that area around it and then creates new meshes, uh, new shapes out of that, sort of like a box shape. You can also have your own alphas and then you can use the clay brush that way. Now for this video, I didn't really follow any major steps such as starting off with the blocking out and then ending off with the refinement. Um, I was refining as I was sculpting at the same time. Uh, this was just because the topology was so, so good. Um, well, it wasn't perfect, but it was good enough for me to go in and refine things as I was sculpting other parts. Um, if your sculpt doesn't look that well, uh, you can always go back and work on it again and again. You can also revisit this video anytime you want um, and just keep on working on your sculpts. Now we're just uh, messing around with things. We're going to be uh, um, putting in teeth. We're refining the mouth, uh, parts of the head. You don't have to put in that that many details on the head we are basically just following the reference that we have right here so we're not gonna go crazy with the detail I'm gonna came when it comes to the head uh, but what I did want to do was um, put in a, a little more details around the eyes as well uh, I didn't put that in the video but uh, I did put in some more details around the eyes um, where you can see like I sculpted the tear ducts as well and then um, I just refined all the other parts that I felt uh, were lacking in detail. Um, and you can continue doing this. Uh, a project is never truly complete. You just you can keep on working on it until you feel like uh, it's perfect or um, the amount of people that you show feel like it's perfect. So with that, um, we can now say that this, this project is complete. Uh, you can go down in, in resolution and see what you can do with the low resolution. Uh, just make sure that you don't apply the modifier. Uh, you can rig the entire mesh and then you can animate it and then you can have the modifier um, set to only render the high resolution when, when you're done with the animations and all that. And I hope that you had fun and I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that you learned something with this video and I will see you in the next one.